everyone. Welcome back to Tea with Publicity. I am here with my, I was just say my <laughs> co-star, my co-star, kind of, my co-pilot, my co-worker, Alex Bennett. I like co-star. <laughs> my co-star, as if we're about to perform. Right. <laughs> um, we are just going to get into things today. Alex is joining me for the intro, and then we are doing an episode on... Um, Something a little interesting, something I've never dis- discussed before, like sugar daddies, feet pics, oh, OnlyFans, um, how to make money selling your feet. And it's ironic we talk about this today because I just got a notification from Instagram saying, your story goes against our community guidelines. And I'm like, hmm, this is weird. Like, which story mm-hmm. would I have posted that's like so inappropriate? And it says, story removed for adult sexual solicitation. <laughs> And it was a picture I put up this weekend of my foot and I covered my toes and I said, Venmo me $200 for the uncensored pic as a joke. Right. I saw that. Did anybody Venmo you? One guy offered $7 and I said, is that all I'm worth? And he said, fine, 14 for the two of them. Was it serious? Uh, was the guy serious? And he said, I'm fucking with you. And then some other guy, I mean, goes, I'll raise you $1. How about eight? I'm like... I'm like, guys, my toes are worth more than that. I think Um, it has to do with the Venmo me something because I did that on like a, like as a uh, joke once I did that on like a Tinder profile when I was like bored with my friends. I was like, just put my Venmo in my thing and then like put the age range, (laughs) which is great for today's topic, but like putting the age range up and I just put my Venmo there and then I got literally banned from Tinder. Did you get money? No, because uh, by the time I had the Venmo up, I got like banned like a second that later. That must be what it was because I was like, Venmo me money. And it's yeah. Like, yeah. I I but it said sexual it something. Mm-hmm. And that's the foot. Sexual solic- solicitation. Oh, but you were so soliciting. soliciting. No, but your feet. You were selling sex. Your yeah, feet? feet are sexual, apparently. Which now. We'll, yeah. Which we'll get into today. <laughs> like, okay, oh. wait. Has anyone ever sucked your toes? Absolutely not. Have <laughs> no. they sucked yours? No. No. But I, can, I can honestly say. No, I swear. Because you have to tell us. But I, no, but I'm trying to think if I how I would feel or react. I don't think it would be something that I would be into. But if it was going to happen, I think I'd let it happen. I don't think you know until it, you try, like, how you would feel. I don't think I'd like it, but I don't – if I – say I was so into someone. Yeah. And they just, like, started kissing down my leg and licking my toes. I think I'd let it happen. Yeah. Would Do you, you know what I mean? Okay, well, actually, like, some – the. You know, like how like you know sucking on someone's finger is like a, a normal thing. Yes. I, the first time that someone did that to me, I gave them like the weirdest look. I was like, "What are you doing?" Because yes. I had never heard of that. And then I was like, "Oh, so you just don't know. You never know. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's true. You know, you do never know." But I can't say it's happened to me though. And I also don't want to be the sucker of the toes. That's I would draw a line in the sand right there. Yeah. If you want to lick my foot, that's your prerogative. I'm not licking yours. But are your feet ticklish? Yes, when I get pedicures, I almost kick the women in the face. Absolutely. I don't think you can handle (laughs) toe sucking. I just... No, it might be different. Might be different. But I don't think that's hot to me. I'm not turned on in the the slightest right now, even talking about it. No. I feel nothing. I feel nothing. I feel, like, negative towards it. Yes. Um, So, anyway, we're going to get into that later. So, like, we need to pivot for a second. Um, Because... And then Alex will also join me for the Ask Alyssa segment. But before that, um, so Alex is new here at Barstool. Her and her mom got hired. Yeah, we did. Which is iconic. <laughs> Wait, your mom last night went on a liking spree of like liking like my 30 last photos. She was texting me about your apartment this morning. <laughs> what was she saying? She was like, I'm trying to piece it all together. Is there like a whole tour I can look at? And I was like, yeah, There it's is on YouTube. on YouTube. I know. I, I sent her there. Wait, that's so cute. Yeah, she was studying. Was she just getting like inspo or something because you just moved here? Yeah, I think she I think she was getting inspo, but it's funny because I didn't even tell her I was doing this today. So it was mm. just like random world energy so that good. she was creeping on you. I feel like my microphone's so high. Um, okay, so... We both, I resigned my lease, um, which has been quite a doozy because the market's been freaking insane, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, guys, New York City rent ever since the pandemic has gone so up that, like, you could speak to this more, but people were getting in, like, bidding wars over rent, you were telling me. Yeah, people are overpaying for rent, not not even buying a place. But if your rent's $1,000, people will pay, like, 1100 a month right now. That's how competitive it is. Well, what's, crazy. well, what was happening is 
you were trying to apply for apartments and like the real estate person would come back and be like, um, yes, the market, the, like someone offered a thousand dollars over asking per month. And it's like, what the, f-? like, we're not buying a house it's, we're here. Renting. So my rent went up like, honestly, like $700. A like, month? Insane. Yes. That's, that is, that is insane. And I am the asshole that's <laughs> doing it because there's nothing on the market. I have no other options. And by the time you take that money and you like add it up and divide it by the cost of movers, mm-hmm. the cost of putting down money for, you know, like a, what is it called? Like when you put down the money, security deposit, yes. broker's fee, whatever. I would be spending that same amount of money and putting myself through all this hassle. So I kind of had no choice but to resign. I think it's smart. No, but I think <sighs> it's smart that you resigned. I know it's annoying on the cost. Hold on. Did you get a good deal during COVID? The best deal. That's why my rent went up so much. Okay. So now do you feel like you're paying, is it like okay? I'm you paying live? less than what you should be paying in a one bedroom apartment. Still, still with the $700 still. Okay. Yes. Okay. But it's still a lot compared to my COVID price. Right. But COVID, you know? your COVID price spoiled you, would you say? Of course. Yeah. 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 But I, it's just like unfair because when you're a single person, you're paying the full rent by yourself. I'm not splitting that responsibility with someone. Right. It's expensive to so live in this city. Yeah. You guys are scaring me because I have to look for apartments. <laughs> it's really bad. It's awful. I wouldn't wish this upon anybody. It took her like a month and a half to get an apartment. Yeah, 45 days. Like I And I would tour like two a day sometimes. And she would be in the apartment and they would be like, oh, sorry, it's off the market. Yeah, like it, it was crazy. And anybody that's – people would DM me and they'd be like, I'm going through the same thing. Like this is not just you. It's real. It's just because everyone's coming back to New York right now and things are on fire. But what scares me about this is like the prices aren't going to go down again unless – Like now they're just stuck up forever. It's so annoying. But anyway, so I did a furniture partnership um, with my last apartment Mm -hmm. and it's up within like November. So a few months ago I ordered like my dream white couch and now I need like a few more things for my apartment since that furniture is going away. Right. And I'm like on the hunt for the perfect accent chair. Okay. And like, you know, like. I like thrifting. I like vintage finds. Um, so I sat up last night. This is why I went to bed at 2 a.m. Mm. I sat up looking. I found my dream chair on CB2, which like obviously is a modern brand. It's not like vintage. But it's $1,500. And I'm like, I'm not spending $1,500 on a chair. Right. Like I personally feel like that's just not a smart use of my money when my rent's going up this much. Like Absolutely. I'm trying to counteract paying more per month by Mm -hmm. not living so lavishly so I'm like okay I can't spend that much money on a chair but now I'm on an all-out hunt I'm like DMing like people that find vintage Mm -hmm. furniture and I'm like sending them pictures I'm like could you find me something like this but you're going through the whole furniture situation yeah but hold on because I feel like you had mirror gate on your Instagram when you were looking for the mirror people get really into like you furnishing yes so do you just need an accent chair? Because, like, I'm also interested. I need an accent chair and I need a new rug. I found both things I want. Like, I found my ideal okay. rug, my ideal chair, and now I'm on the hunt for finding them for a quarter of the price. Mm-hmm. That's the issue. Okay, so you'll find something you love and now you want to knock it off. I will work backwards. Knock it off's not the term. Yes. You want to get it for a lesser or price. Or find it on, like, Facebook Marketplace or Craig, whatever. I... But I also like the hunt. Like, mm. for me, it's so fun okay. to do that. Hold on. So are you more apt to do the hunt for a month or pull the trigger to find something because you want something there? I'm willing to wait. You will wait for the right Well, because thing. M- right now, what what month are we in? We're at the end of September. My furniture rental isn't up until a month from now. So I have a month. So you're early enough. I'm early enough. Yeah. And I think I want to go to – you should come with me because there's all these stores in – Brooklyn that sell like really cool furniture and stuff and I think I might want to go there and like try to find something but I learned my mistake like I will never post something on Facebook marketplace again to my Instagram because (laughs) they went after (laughs) I mean the tea tribe was like but you guys I posted if you're new here like a mirror that I wanted from Facebook marketplace and then everyone like found the posting and then people were outbidding me for the mirror and then I didn't get it it was like a whole shit show so I'm not gonna ever do that again don't 
Um, it was great, though. Yeah, that was a lot. Like, <laughs> it was good for content. You should go, though, because you should go to Brooklyn. I'll go with you because I need to find stuff. Yeah. But we have to live in the mecca of furniture. I know, and I like finding pieces that you can't just find at, like, a store. Like, right. something that's, like, different. Totally, because if you buy a chair on CB2, everyone's going to know exactly. that's the CB2. I, you know, like, yeah. oh, got it. What um, is your, like, situation with furniture right now? Because isn't everything so freaking delayed? It, everything, even if you find something. Okay, I went into West Elm, and I said, do you have anything in stock? And they are like, we've got this room in stock. And I went into the room, and there was, like, three bar stools that were, like, missing a leg. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my gosh. So everything you order is at least four weeks out right now at least at least and in new york we should be able to get it pretty soon well they say four weeks but then you'll get an email and they'll be like this item's delayed so my friend told me jill that if you like she ordered a couch from west elm and it kept getting delayed and she contacted them and they reimbursed her for every day it was delayed that's cool I west know. elm did that yeah okay that's legit and my couch is from them so you bet your ass if it's delayed i'm I better believe that you will taking be taking advantage. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's it's messed up right now, like trying to A, find a spot and B, trying to furnish it. Mm -hmm. So I just took a bunch of stuff from home. Yeah. Like my like my childhood bedroom. <laughs> and then the rest you'd have to wait on. No, it's like you just, well, at least you're in a, I don't even You're care. in an apartment now. I'm not living in a hotel anymore. That was bad for me mentally. Oh, hell no. Mm. Hell no. Okay. So that is my apartment update. Resigned my lease. On the hunt for an accent chair and a rug. So I will keep you guys posted. Maybe I'll share it at Instagram stories, but I'm a little scared because, like, if I find something and one of you buys it before me, I'm going to be so sad. Will you share it after you I'll buy it? I'll share it after I, want it, I, I buy it. I want to know. Well, maybe what I'll do is share the rug I want and ask people to help me find the dupe. Yes. It's like a $2,000 rug. Like, again, I'm not spending that much no. money. Just... And I did find a dupe, but I don't like it nearly as much. So... We'll see. We'll see. Show me the rug. I Because I've been on the sites too. I might yeah. have seen a dupe. <laughs> You're like, I've been around the block. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm familiar with the space right now. <laughs> All right. So I want to get into our Sugar Daddy Feet Picks OnlyFans oh segment. Oh my God. I'm so excited. You guys. First of all, I ask people to submit stories. Oh no. Of course, when I log in, it's telling me about how my post got taken down. Oh. I asked people to submit stories. I saved them in a different folder in my inbox. And I'd like to read some of them to you guys. And also, um, I got a lot of people being like, hi, I don't sell feet pics, but I'm interested. So I asked people, like, how do you do this? Okay. So, okay. Let's see. Some people I went, like, really back and forth with because I'm like, I need more info. The feet thing is new, right? Like, this wasn't, this wasn't a fetish I back in 1950. I think it's probably always been around but with social media, it's such a thing. We're yeah, you about couldn't it go now. text people feet pics back in the day. Right. I was yeah. thinking in the 1950s. I'm like, were they having a foot fetish? Oh, yeah, this of course. Yeah. But like, they probably didn't, you know, talk about it as they much. Didn't. Okay. Okay. So sense. this first one that I'm going to read is someone that oh ended up falling in love with her sugar daddy. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. So she said, had a sugar daddy, ended up falling in love, and he left his wife for me. He sold the family home. In Long Island, moved his entire family to Florida so we could move in together in New York. After a lot of back and forth, he ended up getting cold feet and leaving me. The wife also found out and was has gone after every penny he has. I would too. Um, he met a girl who lives in Brooklyn and is super rich. And now I'm pretty sure he is the sugar baby. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that backfire. That what? I have so many questions for this girl. Okay, though. so I said, oh my God, I need details from the beginning. How did you meet and how much did he pay you? Yes. This is what I need to know. Yeah. Um, she said, I was tired of meeting guys that were lame AF, so I went on that website. Uh, what's the name? Seeking Arrangement. Oh. That's the website, by the way, guys. I didn't think anything of it. I was like, you know, what if I'm going to keep on dating lame dudes? I might as well get something out of it. And actually get taken out to a nice place. So yeah, the first date, it was so intense. Best sex I ever had. Super crazy relationship. There was so much chemistry. I said, did you go into it thinking you'd have sex with him? Because you know, like... Yeah. Usually no, right? Yeah, that's what I think. I think Same. it happens. But I think sometimes people go in being like, this is very much an arrangement. Like you're going to give me money and we're going to be 
friends, but it's who knows? a job, right? She said he didn't pay me cash monthly, but he would pay me with super expensive gifts, trips for me and my friends to Vegas, dinners every night, clubs, etc. He was in the car industry, so he got me a BMW. Uh- he sometimes would order me lunch and dinner. I said, holy shit, I think I need one. <laughs> <laughs> she said, he actually negotiated a deal for my sister, too, to get a car, blah, blah, blah. Oh, last time he saw her, he gave her a Cartier Love necklace for me. Like, I guess, like, he gave the sister necklace from her. Oh, oh, for, okay. What, like, for her from the guy. He gave the sugar baby's sister a necklace being like, oh, give this to your sister and okay. act like it's from you. Wait, it oh. was a Cartier, whatever. Anyway, he gave okay. the sister a Cartier okay, 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 okay. necklace. I said, this sounds enticing. <laughs> she said, honestly, I thought for a second this was the love of my life. But then I realized that whatever starts wrong is going to end wrong. Ooh, and he like kind of chose that girl over me. Sometimes I think he chose her for security because he was scared he was going to lose all his money during the divorce. Other times, maybe he's in love with her. Who knows? But I saw on Pinterest that she's planning a wedding. <gasps> Oof. Um, whew, I said last That's like question. level A stalking, finding their Pinterest. I kind of, yeah, that's savage. Yeah, to find, <laughs> yeah, you to go that, that far. Is. Wow. Um, I said last question. Did he ever say why he felt he needed to pay someone to spend time with him? I'm curious why they can't just date without doing that. She said, he said his friend was on the website and the friend was in the car industry. And he, like, thought it was basically interesting that his friend was doing it, so he gave it a chance. Um, Moral of the story, she said, (laughs) and then I'll wrap this story up. She said, last fight we had, he got upset because he saw, I saw charges on his Amex. I guess she had access to his account. And I could tell he was dating in New York City and not telling me, so I bought myself a Dior tote bag. Oh, good for her. (laughs) I mean. Add a girl. I would, too. (laughs) I would do that, too, for a check. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, hold on. Usually when you have a sugar daddy, you're not – it's never the love of your life. So what I'm learning from getting these messages is that every situation is different. Okay. Like some people, it's very – it's like a virtual relationship. Some people, it's an actual relationship. It's like – Okay. I don't know. I don't think it's one size fits all. Do I think, you get on it because you want companionship most of the time for the for the older – I want to get into the psychology of a sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. Like, what makes him think he can't just date? And what makes him think he needs to spend money to make someone like him? Is it a power thing? Is it an ego thing? Mm -hmm. Is it a worth thing? I don't... That's what I don't get. I think part of it could have to do with the fact that, like, what if it's a man that's, like, really rich that just has never been good at dating or isn't really attractive, then that might help them. But so or if not, there also could be – there are or guys what? out there that are, are obsessed with gifting. They just love giving. And, like, maybe that freaks some people out. So, like, girls that sign up for seeking arrangements or whatever, like, are obviously looking for that. You know I what guess. I mean? Yeah, that's I interesting. just don't get the, the psychology of what they get out of, like, spending their money on someone that they don't really – I don't know. There are guys out there that do that. I had one once. You had a sugar daddy? No, not a sugar. Oh, <laughs> oh, I was like, oh my gosh. No, I had, a, I had a guy <laughs> that was like, I was with this guy that was like pretty rich, but he was like my age. And he, all he did was just from day one was like gifting me things. And um, hmm. he took me on a helicopter ride. Like it, it just, there are guys out there that like, that's their love language is just gifting. And so some girls like don't like that. And so maybe... They these men sign up for these sites to find girls that do like that. I don't know. That's just is could be stere- one guess. Is the stereotype though in my head wrong that these are older guys? I'm imagining mainly uh, yes, older. Majority. I think mainly because I think generally older men have more money in terms of success builds over time. And if you're younger and you have money, you'll probably just find a girl. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, that's, I, I, that might be bad to say, but I think that would be kind of the the. No, lay I of think the you're land. right. If you're young. And you've got money, you just I kind still of... just don't get it. Like, I get if they like giving gifts, but can't you just meet a girl a normal way and then shower her with love? Like, they're seeking out people to pay for. It's a, I think it's a power thing. An ego, power. It's, I think it's also a worth thing. Yes. Like, I'm only worthy with my money. And you can't, you're not as good if you don't have me to pay yeah. you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Do they get to, this is my next question. Have you learned yet 
so there's a guy, let's call him Tom in this scenario, uh-huh. and he's on the website. Does he get to see like seven girls and pick which one he wants? From my understanding, from listening to other podcasts on this, it's like a dating app, and some girls like show just their bodies, and some girls show just their face or whatever. And I think you put your terms in your profile, like, um, you know, like won't have sex only up for X Y Z, like dinner. Yes, I think. Okay, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Would you make an account and, like, go on a date? No. On a, de- on a dinner date? Never. Mainly because, like, let's say I knew that I didn't have to sleep with the, the person and it was just dinner. 100%. Maybe if I didn't think it, anyone would know. I'm not going to ever put myself on a public platform to do something like okay. that. Right? Like, what if, <laughs> what if you sign up on a website like that and one of your dad's friends sees you? Then don't we both have a problem, though, because we're both on it? Yeah. 100%. But, like, <laughs> like the yeah. reason why I think about this is because I'm, I want to explain the story without naming anyone involved. Okay. Someone I know had a friend who was always on lavish vacations and doing, like, really lavish things, designer stuff. And um, there was suspicion, like, maybe she was a sugar baby. And the person, a group of guys basically said – oh yeah your friend oh yeah I've seen her on those websites oh and then confirming what we thought was potentially true right so like guy my point is it gets around right people know but if you did it as like an experience like would you do it as an experiment though to see I personally don't find desire in that in doing it I don't I don't judge anyone like if right. you honestly it's a great freaking source of income for people it's bad if you're if you're just doing dinner oh my god 100 percent. i'm wondering what you're making though is it like a grand we'll get to some okay. some people give me numbers okay i yeah oh my god the more the merrier honestly reading half of these i was like damn i could get someone to pay my rent yeah, and no, just you like yeah. pay rent and, <laughs> yeah and just go to dinners so i get the appeal i personally I bet I was thinking about this as I was reading these like some of them were like oh we're just emotional relationships we just text we've never met and part of me is like oh maybe I could do that but then I was thinking I'm too invested of a person like if I'm spending time talking to someone Mm -hmm. first of all if I'm not into you at all I'm gonna be repulsed like Mm -hmm. talking to you and second of all then if I start getting into you then like my feelings are gonna get involved so I don't think I have the capacity to do something like that. That's very emotionally aware to know, like, you just couldn't do it. That, like, I can't have unattached sex. Like, I'm not one mm-hmm. of those okay. people. So like, it's messy and you just can't, then, yeah, then, then you have to Like, know. I'm too, like, I have, like, a lot of, like, empathy and a lot, like, I would be like, so tell me about your family. Like, I would make it too weird. Right. I can't be you one of those know people. That, yeah. Yeah. So I think it depends on the person. Definitely depends on the person. I feel yes. like if I met a sugar daddy out somewhere yeah that's different maybe that has happened to me once and then he asked me to dinner <laughs> but it wasn't like a situation where he i thought he was gonna pay me like he i just yeah, knew he was yeah. gonna take me to a fancy dinner and he was like a hot older guy so i was like whatever like i'll just go to I dinner i would do it, i was in like a bad mood that day from another guy and i was just like fuck it like i need a nice dinner i need to be spoiled he took me to how do you pronounce it Cipri- cipriani cipriani yeah yeah we went it was great wait apparently cipriani's where all the sugar daddies in the city no their sugar oh my god no it's this great. man this oh. man every single person at that restaurant the owner like they, they all him. knew him they were like when the check when it came time for the check he was like oh like can i get the check he's like oh later like you're here i'll let's get, it, get it next we'll time we'll put it and on like, the tab yeah. literally like, literally and um be fun to go sit there and someone see. did a tiktok walking past like cipriani yeah. and it was all these older men sitting outside with hot young girls I, and they were like Where's that was me for the night and by the way go. i saw so many famous people there was like uh, diplo see, was there fun, like yeah this and is like i was like blast. yeah no it was so much fun it was during fashion week so every yeah. celebrity was there i saw like dove cameron like, was, like three weeks it was, like, ago cra- yeah a lot <laughs> it was like just happens <laughs> yeah i was like this yeah it was. it was really recent <laughs> um last night <laughs> and then he like took me home in his convertible and that was it i was like bye and then we, we really haven't talked do you have since. his phone number yeah so he typically pays girls he I don't think he tell you that. No, I don't. No, he just paid for the dinner. So. Guys like that, that's an ego thing. You just want to be seen with yes, the hot yes, chick. Yes, yes, yes. I think know. that's. I think that's what the situation was. He just wants to you... go out to dinner with a hot girl. That makes sense. But how did you know he was a sugar daddy? 
Well, I didn't know he was a sugar daddy, but I met him at like a club. Okay. And he was dressed of. in a suit. He's and he an older was a man. hot, like, yeah. he was like a silver fox kind of guy. Oh my God. If my at mom hears this, life, he's going to kill me. <laughs> at this point in my life, though, I'm 30. Like, I'd say yes to a nice silver fox and go out to dinner. I mean, you but, better. But that's, <laughs> but that's like my issue because I'm 23. Yeah. And like, I shouldn't be doing that. And like, he has sons that are like my age. So see, this is that. what I don't but understand. But he was like normal. Like, if you see them, a guy at a club, like, they're clean clearly somewhat normal whereas on these sugar daddy websites they're probably working all the time and you just don't know what they're like so like I would be scared to meet up with them as for my safety like I would feel more safe having met this person naturally you know what I mean yeah definitely I think if I was like out at a bar let's say and I sat down and I start talking to a guy and he's like oh like what do you what kind of material things do you like? And I'm like, oh, you know, I like Chanel bags, Birkins. <laughs> like, and okay. he was like, oh, I'll buy you one. Who am I to say no? Well, that's no, but saying. I wouldn't, I don't think it would go like that. I think it would be like, <laughs> this is my dream scenario. No, yeah, that's a dream yeah. scenario. I think it would be more like, well, <laughs> how about we go to dinner and you come back to mine for a little and <gasps> that that's just, me out. that's mm-hmm. how it is. Mm-hmm. I'm talking, right. that's how it goes. Transactional. I just, <laughs> Simply a business or, di- yeah, dinner. No, they're like, if we have a good connection, if we have a good vibe, like, I actually know, like, I've, I'm i so intrigued by the sugar daddy situation, so I know some, like, how it works sometimes. Like, I've gotten, like, DMs and stuff from Okay, so men I always get for, sugar daddy DMs, yeah, but I assume they're I'm fake sure you people would. under aliases, because they're always some spammy. Some are, some are, yeah. Some are fake, and then they'll be like, okay, like. They want your banking info, so yeah, they yeah, steal so it's your obviously, money. obviously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're like, well, I'll send you money, but they're just scamming you. So let me get to the next story. Okay. We're going to be switching between topics in terms of like now we're talking about selling feet pics. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> this is fascinating. Okay. This person said, oh my God, my friends and I got Instagram requests to sell feet pictures. So we did. We each made over $100 for sending a video of just our feet. We had to wear jeans and write on paper. With the pencil between our toes, <gasps> then crumple the paper with our toes. It was fucking weird, but hilarious. I've never laughed harder in my entire life. And now the guy still randomly sends us five to ten dollars oh. every few weeks, even though we told him it was a one time deal. He was oddly nice. We never saw his face and he never saw ours. Still top five funniest things I've ever done. Honestly, that's funny if you're with the friend and you yeah. like I could see them cracking up doing it. <laughs> no, but this. it's it's funny by yourself. Like if someone's offering you money for like a lot of money for a picture of your foot, like And why not? There's zero risk in that from what I can tell. Okay, so then this person said I am a stripper with multiple sugar daddies. I said, oh my God, tell me more. She said, ha ha ha. I have a strictly online sugar daddy. We email and he will send me $1,200 each month just to talk to him. What the hell? Do you pay taxes on that? Probably not. That's great. She said, then I have a sugar daddy with a foot fetish. Just gets off playing with my feet. (laughs) Used to have one client that used to bring a leash and make me walk him around the strip club calling him a stupid slug. I said, the online one sounds ideal. She said, he's literally perfect. <laughs> Whatever I ask, I get. And I don't even see him except pictures and he videos of talking about my day. So she literally just tells this guy about her day and she gets $1,200. Did she say a week or a month? A month. She just she just literally is like, e- in it's email? Yeah. So she sits at her laptop and just reports on her day. He just wants companionship. Okay, but this is my point. Like Then I think I'd get emotionally invested in the person's well-being. You would have to try. Right. That's true. Like, if he was, like, an old guy, I'd be like, are you taking your medicine? <laughs> like, <laughs> are you taking care of yourself? Like, I don't think I'd be able to just, I don't know, though. If I'm emailing, like, picture me at work. Hey, Steve. That's just the- recorded a podcast. Today I'm wearing black. A little cleavage is showing. No, that would not, for $1,200 a month, I guarantee you could do that. Hit me up. No, to be honest, I'd want a little. I'd want a little more than twelve hundred dollars a month if I'm daily emailing. Like, (laughs) give me something daily. Yeah, but you're not. But but is it or just or just pay my rent? Right. Yeah. Which is a lot more. Which I think they would be down to do because if if this guy's willing to pay twelve hundred, he's down for. I think she could get more. Definitely. She asked. I agree with that. Okay, this one's good. You know the millionaire matchmaker? Do you know her? No. From like Bravo, whatever. It, it's kind of besides the point. She said, when I lived in D.C., a friend of mine was a millionaire matchmaker, and she decided to set me up with one of her clients. I was 26 at the time, and the man she set me up with was 52. He was in real estate and a dentist. Who has that much time on their hands but whatever? 
<laughs> the way it worked was before the date, he was sent photos of me, but all I got was his name. We met at a restaurant, and my first impression was meh. I was extremely nervous for the date and proceeded to drink an entire bat- bottle of Cabernet at dinner. Cabernet, yeah. Mm. Cabernet reminds me of like the show. That's why I got confused. <laughs> my dumbass then agreed to go back for a nightcap at his oh, place. No. His place was absolutely unreal. Multiple terraces with views of the city, huge chef's kitchen, gorgeous finishes. My jaw was on the floor. As he was giving me a tour, he had his hand at the base of my neck guiding me through the house saying shit like, can you see yourself cooking here? Can you see yourself getting ready in this bathroom? I got super freaked out and decided I had to get out of there. I went into the master bathroom and called an Uber. When I walked out of the bathroom, he was butt ass naked (gasps) on the bed, handing me a glass of wine, and I literally ran out his front door. The next day, I was at a barbecue with friends, and he was blowing up my phone trying to take me to the wineries in Virginia in his Ferrari. I finally told him I appreciated everything, but I was not interested. The feedback he gave the matchmaker friend was, quote, she tried to sleep with me on the first night. And then she wrote, see you in hell, motherfucker. Oh! <laughs> okay, this is the story that I imagine in my head. Yeah. 26, 52, he's yes. loaded and he's creepy. And Wait, he but like, as you apart- were saying, that is somebody who just needs the, wants, can you see yourself Ego. in this? He needs that. Sorry. Yes, yes. He's Ugh. like, oh, I bet you'd like this life. Like, as if you can't fucking provide it for yourself. Right, like, yeah. It's just to me, yeah. That's that's the scenario I find most typical that lives in yes, my brain. Yes, that was, yeah. I, I do agree. Okay. I had a sugar daddy who would ask me for photos and videos. He would send me money in advance, $200 a photo and up to 1K for videos. I really didn't do anything crazy, and I would send the same ones for free to fuck boys. So why not make a quick buck? We never met in person, and he would also send me $30 for Starbucks every morning and 30 30- yeah, thirty dollars for Starbucks every morning. I would treat the girls at the office. LOL. <laughs> I ended up blocking him, and he still has me on Venmo, and will randomly send me twenty dollars because he quote hopes I'm well. <laughs> Need. Need. I said I'm dead at the last part. I said, how did you find him? Also, some of these are interesting because yes, some me, of them me met the IRL. Yeah, give me the answer to how did you find him. She said, my friend is a pharmacist where the sugar daddy picks up his prescriptions. You know, blood pressure and Viagra pills. No. Oh. <laughs> he asked him if he knew any girls looking for a sugar daddy, and he thought of me. How thoughtful. Oh, oh this, this is great. I said, what a good friend. <laughs> The vin- randomly been most twenty dollars because he hopes you're well. I'm oh, not mad. It's so good. Okay. That's a great one. Okay, here's another one. Okay, these are so good. <laughs> this one is beyond. Oh boy. She said one time a guy I had previously previously hooked up with paid me for pics of my poop. Does that count? <gasps> I said, tell me more. Immediately. She said, here's the tea. During college, I was hooking up with this guy from my hometown that was very into anything to do with butts and anal sex. <gasps> It was a good hometown hookup, but he would sometimes mention how it would, how it would be okay if I shit on him during sex, <laughs> but I never did. One time when he had a girlfriend, he tried making a fake Snapchat to message me on it, but I shut that down real quick. Oh, she said, but I shut that shit down real quick. No pun intended. <laughs> And I was done with him. During quarantine, another random person added me on Snapchat. He didn't say it was him, but I could tell based on the texting patterns and punctuation. He then offered me money for pics of my poop and videos of me shitting and doing stuff with the shit. I told him I needed to see some money to know he was serious. So I made a cash app and he sent me money. And then I only ever sent him pics of my poop because I was pooping anyways. So whatever. (laughs) When I wouldn't send anything else, he sent me more money. Anyway, because he didn't want me to ghost him. This is all strictly on Snapchat, Snapchat. So unless he was using another phone to take pics, I don't think he has any evidence. Once stuff started to open up again, I blocked him. I said, I'm fucking dead. She said, the worst part is the girl he cheated on me with had like 50K followers, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's kind of besides the point. She said, I never added it up, but it probably got to be around $1,500 from him. For poop photos? For poop photos. I... I d- I don't know there's a price you could pay me. I'm too shy. Just like, I don't know what it is about that You're telling that me one. like, if someone was like, give me, like send me a picture of your poop for $1,000, a Snapchat. I yeah, but get what goes away? But I don't want, if I was a fake person, this is what I'm getting at. Like, I would never as like Alyssa Amoroso, like put that on my Snapchat. 
could physically not take the photo. I could I can see the toes. Because that's, yeah. Yeah, like, you got to scrunch the paper. But I, I don't even want my toes under my name. No, I I would agree. be anonymous, I feel. The poop, though. But what if you were anonymous poop pooper? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I, I'm always thinking like IP addresses. Like, can what? They, like, oh, IP. Can they like search I thought you, you said, okay, but like, what? Like, okay. addresses. <laughs> what the fuck? That's what I thought she said. Too. <laughs> no, like, I, like you're like, yeah. the anonymous person for what me. What if I would need a burner phone? Complete burner phone that was bought by a complete burner person. But what if you weren't like an inf- Like, what if you weren't an influencer? Still, I wouldn't. That doesn't even, like, I just wouldn't. Why am I, like, not, like, why do I not care? <laughs> why are you, like, down to but do I think it? That's, No, I just want the fucking money. Like, I, I need can, money. No, but I think that's the point. Like, so many people feel like you feel. Totally. Yeah. Which is why they do it. And that's why it's fascinating if you're like, I don't know that I would, I would be more apt to go I'd be on upset about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, like, willing. I wouldn't be happy about it. I would just be, like. Ugh, I more I so think if anyone I, I knew ever found out, I would. Like, I care too much about what people think of me is what it comes down to. I want to get, like, see, that doesn't bother me as much because I'm like, okay, I just pooped and I took a picture of it and I got money for it. Like, (laughs) fuck you. Like, are you getting paid for your poops? No. (laughs) That's a a valid, like, thought. For me, I'd rather go on a date in person. Yes, you you rather get wined and dined by the sugar daddy. I'd rather at least, like, be like, yeah, I I did it. I'd have to, like, Mm -hmm. it would have to be that aspect for me. Like, I couldn't hide, I couldn't do the anonymous thing. I'd have to be like, I went on the date. If I I was just anonymously sending someone toe pics and making 1K a month, YOLO. Yeah, no, I'm I'm down for that. But I don't think, I just don't know that I can. I'm down for that. But I also think, I feel like these guys want to know whose feet it is, don't they? Like, that's Mm. part of the whole, like, imagination. I honestly don't really get the psychology behind, like, wanting toes. I think it's because no, not one person in this room is remotely turned on by toes. They don't do it for me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm completely like numb to the toe. Yeah. No, I'm actually like, grossed we out. Gotta, like, find yeah. someone, we have to find someone in this office who has a foot fetish. Billy um, Football. Well, like, that's foot, what I did. Had an OnlyFans toe. He had a, uh, what What was it called? He Billy his- Feetball. <laughs> oh, Wait, let so, me see if can he's on, we like, get him in here, please. I don't know his like. We don't know each other. Hold on, did he I sell can, the the photos or did he like? I just texted um another intern, Madeline, who okay. does macrodosing. Okay, for him to come in here. I just I said, is Billy football here? Yes. Okay, fabulous. So we'll keep we'll keep talking until he shows up. Um, so I said. Someone else said then that she sold pictures because feet pics because a random man came up to her at the mall. They went into the parking lot. I had to sit in all these weird ways and he paid me three hundred dollars. For and, and he took photos of her feet? Yes. <laughs> okay. I mean that that's what you're saying about that he wants to know it's your foot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would never t- like if I was gonna send a foot pic, I would never have my face in it. Wait, no. this, also, this is my favorite dm okay this girl said when i was pregnant i had an only fans called pregnant with pickles That's hilarious <laughs> the about me said trying to make some extra money to raise my son as a single mom doing what i love most eating pickles i would eat pickles in different outfits different places made a couple thousand extra a month now that i'm not pregnant anymore and i have a son i felt like i needed to retire the page i said that is iconic pickles that's funny. That's but would she like funny. sexually eat them? I, I guess. She was probably just like dressed sexy eating pickles. But making a few thousand dollars a month. Like if you're a single mom, you go off, queen. Please go off. I mean, that's awesome. That's empowering. A couple K a month. Yeah. Pickles. What's up, guys? My name's Alyssa. Hi, nice to meet you all. Um, We heard that you had a feet only fans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, So about like a year ago. Uh, I started getting these weird DMs from like burner accounts uh, about my feet. And like, are they nice feet? No, they're terrible. <laughs> I literally have size like. Like, have you ever gotten a pedicure? No. How big are they? Uh-huh. Size fourteen. Okay, well that's. Why. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is a big. That's a very it's a large big foot, foot, Billy. Yeah, so a big foot, Billy. <laughs> a big foot, Billy. <laughs> and New then cow. I got yeah. So I just kept getting harassed by several because I kind of. During the pandemic, I started, started to, like, go outside more because I kind of had to because I was inside. Yeah. So I was doing a lot of outdoorsy stuff, and I had, like, these Vibram five-toe shoes 
that wear everywhere. Oh, like the running shoes yeah. with the toe holes. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but like, I hate those. Yeah, I know. Like, t- totally, totally was not for the aesthetic benefit of <laughs> yeah. anyone. But were you like okay. taking pics in them? Like, Well, I was like doing content creation. Okay. I was just running and around with them. people saw them. people's dads. Yeah. Like, started. I was wondering. Yeah. So. So you made Billy feet ball. <laughs> well, yeah. So then I did it as a joke. Um, and then like set the subscription uh, thing super high. And then, like, I posted on Twitter, like, is it like it was funny, but so it, are you a toe guy? No, it just got really. I, it was like a total joke because like everyone <laughs> in the pandemic was make, making OnlyFans and yeah, yeah. catch that wave, but it was like Did never actually. See, yeah, like four people paid. $100. So you made like four hundred dollars in a month. Yeah, and then I shut it down because it got too creepy. Oh, so we you should have kept it up. No, it just was way too creepy because I, I didn't actually want to produce the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, oh, hard. well, what if like yeah. see like I'll I'll produce them for you and then you get well, the, I'll get a percentage. Was, Can we do that? I was actually getting scouted uh-uh. by no. No, you weren't. Foot no, you weren't. No. What is that? It's Wait, like, oh, footfinder.com. Yeah. <gasps> That's a thing. And there's a website celebrity feet. Oh my gosh. I'm kind of upset I'm not on yeah. there to be honest. No, it was it was a very, you know, uh weird area <laughs> of the internet I got myself in. And then and you stopped. Just it. walked it back. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. we we thought so we thought you had a foot fetish. That's why we were asking. We're curious. <laughs> this about- is better though because <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you said that's what we were hearing. That's what that's what that's word on the street. That's in the office. The tea. <laughs> well, we're so we're doing an episode today on um, foot fetishes, and oh. this girl just wrote in saying that someone pays her two hundred dollars an hour to tickle the shit out of her feet. <laughs> <laughs> Would you accept that money? No. <laughs> I, well, I was working part time at the time, so I. So you probably would so have maybe. maybe. I've I've I'm doing a lot better financially now. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't I, need I, the feet money. I, I don't need the foot money anymore. I guess what we're trying to decide here on our own is if we would do like if we like this one girl just wrote in saying she sends pictures and she gets paid and we're like would we do it under our name or would we need like a burner phone. I'm team burner phone. I'm team. Uh, I like that you did it under Billy Feetball. Yeah, well, it like, was, that's fun. He went for it like and I, owned it, like. But his was a joke. We're yeah. talking about people that are doing it seriously, right? For real, right? Okay, right, but right. like clearly, none of us would seriously be sending feet pics and being into it. Like it's just for the money. Like that's fair. Essentially, you could say that's a joke. Would you tell your <laughs> friends you were doing it though? Like, no. would you be like, yeah, I do it? Well, I, was I would like public. tell my best friends that I wouldn't just, judge. I would me. just be like, yo, dudes, like, <laughs> check this <laughs> out. <laughs> And then swipe up. up. <laughs> swipe up for feet fix. Hold on, were the people that bought that paid it girls or guys? Oh, I have no idea. Great question. Uh, I'm dying to know. Oh. So that's why I got weird because there's yeah. multiple requests. Basically, if you want to get in the game, just start throwing them out there. Just oh like yes, randomly. how do you garner traction towards your feet profile? So basically, mm-hmm. it was just getting your feet in photos by accident, and then people was started like harassing me through burners about oh, it. Oh, like put like a picture at the beach, like in your feet, like crossed no, on your li- story. No, literally, it would be like me. How I, many? Fo- oh, was this, this on Instagram? Uh, no, no, it was on OnlyFans. No, like oh, that it was were, in, wait, but I don't. I've never been on OnlyFans. Could me, you me see neither. people's photos before I was, subscribing to their? I was never on OnlyFans before I literally went through the creator way to wow. get in there yeah. like cuz I kind of thought I kind of thought I would just maybe start selling other like cameos through there yeah and mm-hmm. stuff like that like and try, like make it a joke sort of but it just got real weird too serious real too weird quick. too fast so like when I was living at home at the time um and like I was doing stuff around the house and like creating content out of it like yeah. building a chicken coop and like I was out in my backyard, so then like I'd be shoeless, like uh-huh. oh, gosh. in the then, dirt. Oh, yeah, gosh. just be like, "Yo, check out my chicken coop." And, and you would like low key little, put your feet. Well, in it was an it. accident. Was it though? Yeah. Oh, they started showing. Well, it and then started. It was the whole thing them. started as an accident. Okay. So then. Wait, and this was like so this was on your Instagram. Yeah. And how many followers do you well, have on your Instagram? No, this is on OnlyFans. This is on no, no, this was on Twitter and oh, Instagram Twitter, before Twitter. the OnlyFans. So once the people wanted the feet, I started getting so many requests. That, that you're like, okay, Billy, so we people. need to just slide ours in there. I'm getting a pedicure. <laughs> but also, but also I would like show up to like the Coach Doug streams in slides or like flip flops. Oh. So it was just like, but also I don't, you know, I, w- I was blessed with freakishly <laughs> shaped feet. feet. <laughs> no, they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> if I think that might be the allure. Yes. I, have fo- I, I played college football 
for like three years, I have like terrible, like football players have terrible feet. Calluses. Well, because, you know, you're in cleats. <laughs> Stubby toes. You're in cleats. <laughs> and it's like the turf's like a 100 yeah. degrees hotter than outside. So your feet are just getting cooked for like years. And it's just, they're not. They're not great. Yeah. Like, so do you think people, I mean, you probably don't know the answer to I, this. I think. But do you I, think uh, people like ugly feet more than they like pretty feet? Mm. Like people that are Ugh. feet people. I mm. think who, there was four very devoted accounts mm-hmm. who then were following up after they paid. Like I tried to give them a refund. <laughs> no. you're like, I don't want to produce this content. I was just yeah. like, because I ma- basically made it to like sort of tweet as a joke. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you creating content yeah you're just being funny fucking around like and it just got a little more extreme (laughs) um but people kept asking and following up like we want but like i basically posted a profile picture which was like my foot oh my god next to a 20 ounce red bull can oh to show the the size (laughs) that's genius (laughs) yeah Yeah, i assume and then uh just like a f- it was just like a joke. That's so funny. Like, do it next to a ruler. Like, just That's keep hilarious. putting it next to objects. different objects. Like, it was just like a, it so was supposed to So did you have to deliver to the four, though? Like, what did you give them? I gave them one photo. One foot. But that's what they looked. That's what they wanted. Wow, this is enough. fascinating. Well, thank was, you. Thank you for enlightening really us. Weird. Yeah, no, I don't have a foot fetish. The whole thing was, like, supposed to be a parody of everyone getting on OnlyFans. Like, I get the, that. The, we need to find the, out if someone in this office has. Do, we, do you I know bet anyone someone who has here. a foot fetish in this office? Please say somebody. Um, Jeff Delo. <laughs> he does. He would. Really? We yeah. need to get him in here. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to see if I can. Don't, 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 don't quote me on that. Just say it was anonymous. I'm going to be yeah, like, no, you're anonymous, anonymous too. But it's going to be on the podcast. <laughs> so. here, you may have a foot fetish. I actually just totally made that up. I think it would just be, he'd be <laughs> the hilarious <laughs> one to have it. Imagine I texted him, hey, I hear you have a foot fetish. Can you please? Pod room one. Pod room one. Yeah, pod room I, one. There's I, a lot of feet in here. <laughs> I literally had no idea what I was walking into. I was just told to go to pod room oh, one. Oh, you didn't know this Yeah, I had no oh. idea what was going on. You're a trooper. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank hey, you. All right, see you guys. Bye, Billy. That's... Wait, I can picture Jeff having a foot fetish, though. Did you just ask him, like, maybe just in <laughs> case? 100%. We can just, like, email. Oh, that was great. Okay. That was so now, great. On to the next. I joined a site to sell my underwear after hearing about it on Snooki's podcast. I made the whole page but couldn't figure out how to mail them in without a return address, so I never followed through. She said, it was wild. You could categorize the underwear by different categories, like post- post-workout, period. It's a little too freaky. <gasps> Oh my gosh. That I believe though. Like, oh yeah. But that's gross. Wow. Post workout. Wow. Mm. What does somebody pay for that? It's like yoga. I'm gross. Undies. Run on. Yeah, that is disgusting. That's hard. That's hard to swallow. Mm. Oh, you couldn't Mm. pay me to do that one. Cannot. Okay. A few more and then we'll carry on. This girl said, I used to have a sugar daddy who had a lot of money. I don't mean nice cars, nice houses. I mean like 12 houses all over the world. Bought me my own um, RRSVR. I think that's a Range Rover. And would leave his jet at random times of the day because I would say, I'm craving a really good croissant with a cappuccino. So we'd fly to Paris for the evening. Holy! Then fly back and be back at work in the morning around 10. Ridiculous Uh. stories. I mean, I could go on for hours. I also had a sugar daddy who, after no longer being his sugar baby for some time, gave me a job because I lost mine during the pandemic. And I was general manager of his construction company. She said, to be honest, I did have big jobs before him giving me this one, but I would make $350,000 yearly until a few months ago when he started getting feelings and was hurt that I turned him down and ultimately fired me. I also fit the description of a D1 athlete and he would casually bring up the subject of kids because he was very, very single and wanted to marry a tall six foot blonde with blue eyes who could give him athlete kids and also had a brain. Talk about knowing what you want. I didn't want to be with him because he'd been my sugar daddy, but also he was a bit crazy and I put up with it because I had such a great job. How wild. Then she said, another one, let me live in his house rent-free for a year with a live-in cleaning lady and cook. And he just wanted presents in the house. I had access to the cars and all, all the time, and I would throw parties and stuff, and he would check in once a month. How Wait, do you- was she- and he wasn't in the apartment? No, he just let her live there. So this mm-hmm. chick is six foot. I'm going to ask, how do you find these sugar? Daddy? How do you have three? And that- she said yeah. she said multiple. 
how yeah, how, how does that them? happen? I asked her, so hopefully she'll get back to me. The first one going to Europe, like just for a croissant. Uh, oh, that is an ideal that's situation. Insane. But like, I'd want to stay in Paris. I'd want to be like, wait, wait, this mm-hmm. one's wild. So this girl said she used to send naked pics to a man who was an assistant to the DA where she lives. He paid her college tuition. Oh my gosh. An extra cell phone and gave me money for gas and anything else I wanted with no questions asked. I was literally the line in WAP when Megan says he bought a phone just for pictures of this wet ass. You know what? Yeah. This went on for about three to four years. All before I met my husband. Blah, blah, blah. When I met my husband, I had to give my phone back. And then I said, did he give you an allowance on top of all of this? She said, yes, I had an allowance of $500 every two weeks. And if I needed more, I would just ask. The crazy thing is I didn't even need extra Oh, I didn't even need to send extra pictures if I wanted more money. Wow. And then she said, I noticed he loved when I would just stroke his ego and tell him how amazing of a person he was for the community. He was so helpful or blah, blah, blah. Like that's the stuff she would tell him. He wanted the ego. I think a lot of them want, I think it's, I think you're right. I think it's like egomaniacs. Major. Um, all right. I'll see if there's any more that are, um, oh, this one's interesting. I have a secret OnlyFans right now and have been selling pee content, but I've been caught. Oh, but I've just been caught and it's not allowed on OnlyFans anymore. So I'm moving to a new app. Only three of my closest friends know that I do this. Wait, can we elaborate? So she's selling pee content on OnlyFans and I guess OnlyFans found out. Yeah. And banned it. Why are they going to start banning there? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, they, you could do nudes on OnlyFans, but you can't pee. Yeah. And when... <laughs> like, where are they drawing the line? Yeah, on the pee. Like, they're going to just start there. Um, I think we'll wrap that segment there because that's a lot of information for one episode. We need to, like, really... I think next step is doing a part two and having one of these people call in with, like, an anonymous, like, voice. You know in documentaries how it's, like, the muffled voice? Yeah, yes, and, the and black. we can ask them anything. Yeah, the black screen. Like, so many questions. And we could ask them. I had a few girls say they'd come on. Really? Yes. Yeah, because there's a lot of follow-up questions there. I have so many, and I think we do a follow-up. Um, so those of you that were looking to get into this, it sounds like a lot of these things just, like, happen in the wild mm-hmm. or, like, on OnlyFans or Twitter or Instagram, Snapchat. I know there's, like, accounts on TikTok that talk about it. I'll, like, come across girls being like, this is how I find my sugar daddies. Totally. I bet it's a thing. It's a thing. There's a lot of them. A lot of people. I bet everybody knows somebody that's a sugar baby. This is all. It's, like, a lot of information to take in. It's a ton of info. And now we're going to switch complete <laughs> gears and give out advice. So it's I like, don't feel like I can right now. It's like raunchy, and now we're like, this is how you heal your relationship with your mother. Photos of, photos of poop to this. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Gear and, switch. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how you do it all. You know, you have to be a lady that talks about these things and then talks about other things. Okay. We're going to help this girl out because I feel like she's in a situation that isn't so great. She said, I've been in a serious relationship with someone for over seven years. We've been through a ton of ups and downs together. He was even by my side through my eating disorder treatment for the first two years of our relationship. This past Friday, we were supposed to go to a wedding together for the weekend. When he got to my house, he was having a panic attack, which I thought was just because we were running late. Once we were in the car and we were ready to leave, he told me he didn't think he could go to another wedding with me, knowing he didn't know if that was something he could give me. Mind you, just a week prior, we'd been looking at townhouses slash apartments to rent and I've talked about marriage and family before. He started talking about how his mental health had been struggling recently with work and that he had been, it had been weighing on him for a few days, but all I saw was red. I lashed out on him, called him names, told him we were done. I was literally sobbing by the time I got in my car and he left my house without saying goodbye after I called him an asshole and told him I hated him. When I got home that Sunday, I tried reaching out to him to talk. I got no response. I tried texting and calling him. I got nothing. I've since since sent him an email and Snapchatted him a pic of my dog that he hasn't opened. We were supposed to go to the lake this weekend with his friends, but I decided to visit my mom instead. And now I'm obsessively stalking his friends' socials to see if they post about the trip. 
It's now been a week since we've talked, and as angry and pissed off as I am, part of me still wants to find a way to work things out. Is that stupid? I don't know what to do. I should also add that we've lived together for about a year, and he did something similar three years ago. We didn't speak for almost a week, and then we decided to take things slow and get back to what we thought was the best we've ever been. Wow. There's a lot to unpack here. First of all, Mm -hmm. they were together seven years. I feel like even if she did lash out and be like, I hate you, blah, blah, blah. Like, you need to give her closure. Like, you can't just ghost her. Yeah, that's not right. Right? Like. But is he, did he break up with her or was he just saying, I don't, I feel like the panic attack was him being vulnerable saying like, I don't know if I could give you a wedding, but I don't feel like it was him saying I'm breaking up with you. I think it's saying though, I don't know if I could marry you. Right. Period. Which means basically, I don't know if you're my person. But didn't, Mm -hmm. didn't he kind of say that it, he was going through like mental health things? Like, I feel like he wouldn't be able to handle a marriage right now if he's going through something. I guess though, after seven years, like wouldn't you kind of. I could understand seeing Red after being with someone for seven years and living together and hearing them say that. That's a long Mm -hmm. time to be like, you still don't freaking know if you want to be with me. Yeah, and you're like wasting my time. It's it's a valid it's valid to be mad about, but I'm wondering like, was the lash out so intense that it merited like a week of? That's kind of what I'm thinking. And she's taking accountability by saying I lost my cool. So like, I'm thinking she was probably like a little, you know, those moments of rage. Oh Yeah. yeah, which is completely fine. So now, yeah, he needs to respond, I feel like. And have a conversation. It's like, do you not see yourself getting married now because you're not financially ready because this, because that? Or are you not ready because we're not each other's person? Right. Right. Is it deeper? Are his parents divorced and he has a bad image of marriage? Like, is it that? But if if she's ready to get married, I think it's almost we're almost I'm very anti ultimatum land, but we're almost to it, I would think. Well, I kind of think it's like, what are you going to waste another few years when you could go meet someone else that maybe you're more compatible with and like wants the same things out of life? And also, I don't think you should really be at the point when I personally don't ever want to be in a relationship where we're ignoring each other ever. No, no silence. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. No silence. So like, I don't like that. That feels very immature that he's just completely ignoring you. It abandons emotional safety. That's a really good point because she won't lash out next time and she'll hide her feelings in fear that he will ignore her. Mm-hmm. You nailed that. That's brilliant. Yes. Well, also, though, do you want to be like, I think sometimes it's easy to be like, why doesn't he want to be with me? But it's like, do you want to be with someone that does this to you? Do you want to be with him? That isn't Ask sure backwards. about you. That isn't um, responding to you. Mm-hmm. Like, look inward and be like, is this serving me? Right. That's that's a good, I mean, yeah. So that's the question. It's, yeah. It's one of the two. But if it's, he's got other baggage that is why he doesn't want to get married. Okay, that's one thing we have to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Why won't he have the conversation? Yeah. That's weird. I mean, you got to talk. You have to talk. Have, you're right. Have to talk. So I wish you well. Send us an update. I hope you guys talk. um, And just challenge yourself to think about how you feel in all this. Okay, next question. Hi, Alyssa. I have an Ask Alyssa question for you. So early in the pandemic, I was going through a rough time. I was a senior in college, missing out on my final months on campus while also going through a big breakup with both a boyfriend and a best friend. The boyfriend one was okay because he was awful, but the best friend one I still think about to this day. Basically, my best friend and I stopped talking because she is dating the shittiest human alive. I'd see him flirt with other girls on campus and he made her cry all the time and told her I couldn't be there for her anymore. Oh, I told her I couldn't be there for her anymore because every time she'd ask my opinion of him, she'd get mad at me and we'd fight nonstop. Fast forward to today and I have an awesome job, a fabulous boyfriend, and a really good group of friends. I know I'm in such a good place, but I can't stop thinking about reaching back out to her. I miss her so much and I just don't know if it's worth it because I'm happy with where I am now. P.S. She's still with the boyfriend. I've had situations like this. I hate that she's losing a friendship over a guy. That's yeah. a shitty guy too. So in college, I had this friend whose boyfriend would cheat on her and like was gross Mm -hmm. to her and I in my head was like we're friends so I'm gonna tell her like I heard he hooked up with someone from the soccer team I heard he did this I heard he did that so I would tell her thinking we're really good friends and she would want me to tell her that and um 
it turned out she would confront him about it and he would turn it around to make it look like I was lying and I was trying to break them up. So like I couldn't win in the situation because somehow I was the bad guy. Right. That like looks like he would be like, she's just jealous of us. She's trying to meddle. Mm. So he like kind of denied it all and then put the blame on me. And her and I lost touch. Like we did because I was like, how can you be with this guy who's like, warping your perception of me and what he's doing to you and later they broke up and I think she realized the truth and I think that's what happens a lot in these situations and we were able to like make amends later on but I think at some point what I've learned throughout the years of friends that do this kind of stuff or friends that are dating guys that you don't like it's like it's not your relationship it's their life and like you really can't have an opinion on it Mm -hmm. unless they're asking you like I need your help like I'm in a bad situation but at some point like you kind of just need to let your friends learn for themselves yeah if you can separate if you can separate the two and be friends with her while she's still dating the guy I guess reach back out to her but maybe keep your friendship at a distance oh yeah she could also reach out to you in this scenario and hasn't fair but I agree like if you can separate the two yeah you can reach out reach back out to her but if if he affects you in this if he's going to affect you the same way the second time as he did the first time you got you can't like yeah. let it be and you're in a good place right now or I was gonna say just say to her you know I'm really sad that we let this guy get between us like if you're with him if you really feel this way if you're you're with him you clearly see something in him and I just miss you as a friend and I'm gonna support you I think you could only be friends if you're going to support her relationship. For mm-hmm. real support her. Because yeah. If it's, you're going to try a second time, I agree. The same shit's going to keep coming up. But yes. that's what I mean by keeping the friendship at a distance to a point where, like, they don't get back to a point where she's asking opinions on him again. Because mm-hmm. if you keep your friendship at a, more of a distance, then she won't ask those questions. Like girls' dinners, not like couple yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Right? Never right. couple things. Don't yeah. go to bars together where you're drinking and he's there. It's mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Which, which then poses the question, is it worth it? To reach out, like, because that seems like a lot of effort. I think I feel now that I'm older and with hindsight, it's like if my friend's with someone and I don't like them, my friend sees something in you, you guys have a relationship, I'm not going to change that. All I'm going to do is put my foot in my mouth and then the girl's still going to choose him over me. So it's like you kind of just have to be like, they're together, I might not like him, but if she's happy, I have to support it. Unless, obviously, someone's, like, abusive or whatever it may be. Like, right. that's then different, different if you don't have to play nice. But I think sometimes you just got to swallow how you feel. It's not about you. Mm-hmm. And, and but in, in, so one other thing on this scenario, I lost a friend one time, and it would, like, keep me, it, we weren't, it wasn't going to work. Like, mm-hmm. I just, and I knew that, but it would keep me up sometimes. I'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh, and it would weigh on me. And then I read a book by Jay Shetty. And he talked about how if you've lost a friend, either one, you can reach out to them, but two, you can write down, like put pen to paper and wish them well and like send them good energy, wad it up and throw it away. And the moment I did that, I have never looked back. You let go of it. Let go of it. Like you could try that first Mm -hmm. and like really wish them well and send her positive energy and like love through paper and then wad it up, throw it away, give it a week and see how you feel. Mm, I love that. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you reconnect with people and sometimes it's just you have to just say we're not meant to be Mm -hmm. even as friends it is unfortunate I hate that feeling though I think mourning a friendship loss is is really tough Mm -hmm. it it really is um okay last ask Alyssa hey love your podcast I had a question about dating apps I recently moved to a new town for graduate school and I'm trying to start dating here on dating apps to start oh Okay, she's trying to start on dating apps unless she happens to meet someone naturally. However, I made a rule pretty much to only swipe right on people who go to my school in some fashion, in med school, grad, law, etc. Just because I feel like it would work better. And honestly, because I'm a bit of a snob. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think it's a bad idea? Not sure how to strike a balance of being open, but also not dating random people I'll have nothing in common with. I think you're being closed-minded. Mm-hmm. Completely agree. Let it fly. I'm not saying to date a townie that you have nothing in common with, but what if there's other colleges in the area? What if there's people that work in the neighboring cities? Or, like, don't just limit yourself to people that are also in grad school. I, I don't think – I think you're doing yourself a disservice. And I understand being a snob. Like, 
obviously sometimes we all on dating apps are snobby. Like you don't like someone's job, you don't swipe. Like it's just human nature. Mm -hmm. But I think you're being too lim. I think you're limiting yourself too much. I think you could have a lot in common with people that don't go to your school. Yeah. Even there could be a doctor. Like he's not in med school, but he's a doctor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would you would be eliminating that person. Or a lawyer or this or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. it. Yes. I think it's more you want to look for attributes in someone that you look for, but you don't have to just limit it to someone that just goes to your school. Granted, yes, I'm sure it would be easier, but maybe it wouldn't. You don't know. Maybe your schedules would be conflicting. Maybe if you dated someone that wasn't going to school that was just like grounded in their career, it would actually be easier. Probably would be hard. You're probably right. It would be harder maybe to date somebody also in school. Yeah. Because then you're both in the same shit. Is it random, but is it hard for you and your husband right now because you just started a new job and he's in school? It's very hard. Are for you us on right completely now. different schedule? Completely. Like, different I feel like you don't even, you've been ever since you started here just like living different lives. Completely. Yeah. It's been so, like, it, it's really, we're like, I miss the shit out of yeah. you so much type thing, but we also made a pact. We were like, we're going to get through it. Like, yeah. we're going to move. We're just going to have to like grind for a second while we're young. But oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you guys are on such different paths, right? Just Completely. like you moved from, we did, I didn't really like interview Alex in the beginning because I just wanted to get into the episode. But yeah, you moved from Oklahoma, well, LA. LA. To here. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a lot. It's changed very quickly. So much change at once. Yeah. Yeah. And like I'm the one with the job. So like, we moved here for my job. I come to work every day. I make friends. He's in school online still. Like they also, haven't gone back. Also, might I just say though, kudos <laughs> to him moving yeah. for your job. I know. We moved We moved from Oklahoma to L.A. for his job. Mm. And then and we're not keeping score. But it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. ironic. You that, make like, sacrifices for each other. Yeah. And then he's like, okay. And I, I think it's cool too because it's not really traditional. Like we moved for my job. It's like good it's yeah. modern where can i get one <laughs> <laughs> can you uh, sign me up for no one, like actually, <laughs> I know. um okay let's get into the spill the tea segment do you have a few minutes to join me i would me love for to it? listen to this yeah, you're gonna have it. no idea what i'm talking about probably because you said you don't watch the circle i don't watch the circle but i'm in the tea tribe and i usually just listen to these anyways so the circle season three is out i started it yesterday justice for Michelle justice for orange Michelle if you know you know if you're watching you're watching I love the circle I do want to reapply I think it is the only reality show I could see myself going on and I actually think I could oh win. my god wait Alyssa you <laughs> would fucking kill it I love the circle I, I actually think I'd win season. like it's a one thing I could confidently oh, say yeah. and you, oh, wait, I, I did could just picture you on this show I, it's made for me it is <laughs> oh made for you I know I didn't even think about that like holy shit so I applied I we're getting fine around casting for season two okay um which shot during the pandemic before I had my job here um I think I wasn't like great in my interview with them because they really wanted me to like play into this like Italian New Jersey girl. And I was like, I haven't lived in New Jersey in like 10 years. Like more than that. Because not college. Yeah. I'm like, that's not my storyline. So I think I would have to go in with a new strategy, which I do have a strategy, but I'll keep that for you can't tell. when you I can't get on the show. Yeah. I think that you should play the like influencer girl like the, with the podcast. No, I have a, a good, I think. Would you be your would, angle? Okay. But would okay. you know yourself or would I want to you... be myself, but not tell people I'm a publicist and I'm strategic. So go in making people think I'm like the vapid, like Instagram girl, mm -hmm. but be like secretly strategic that would whatever. make that would blow their minds do it you got to do this so we'll see but anyway it is so good and the thing that I like about the show is it's very strategic and shows your personality it's not like you hooking up on tv or like you getting drunk like it's very mm -hmm. benign mm -hmm. which I like at this point in my life I don't want to go on reality tv and like get wasted and straight you would like, and you, the it's drama like a, you make no. friends on it sort yeah of. it's like very very pg okay which unless like. you find right. a hot guy but I don't Let's even think I'd be know. able to date someone on the show because I wouldn't know if it was like a woman. Yeah. Because basically we talk about it's a whole catfish show. So it's like, okay, let me explain it for yeah, anyone explain. that hasn't watched it because it's so, such an interesting concept. It The circle is the name of like um, a social media platform. So basically like how we have Instagram, TikTok, theirs is called the circle and they communicate 
via the circle, okay. the circle chat. <laughs> and they each have, they each, every person that's playing in the circle has their own room. So you do like not own see any room. other contestant. Okay. You're in your room. I'm in my room. Emily's They're all in, in the same room. building, though. You're all in the same oh. building, but you're communicating via social media. Mm-hmm. So you, Alex, could be playing your husband using his pictures, pretending to be a dude. I could be like, you could either be a catfish or... Or you could be who you really say so you are. So some people are real. You could really be a little bit Yes. Photo. Yeah. The whole gist of it is play what you think will get you to win and will get you to th- be like the, the most other popular people. Right. in the circle. Who, how, oh, like who right. has the most like, influence like, in yeah. the circle? Do you think that you could be yourself and get be liked by that? Or do you think you could play somebody else and be liked by that? But you really have to know your facts about that person. So, for example, someone yes. played Lance Bass in the last season, and you have to know your facts about him, but she was his publicist or his like personal assistant, assistant. personal assistant. So she knew everything about him. So people were testing, oh, like, what, you, what, what, what are you wearing, wearing the at concert? this concert? Yeah. And, and she he, knew the answer because she was his personal assistant. But then there's some things that are so, like, the one that I'm watching now, it's so funny because there's a gay guy playing a lesbian girl, and then a lesbian girl playing a straight girl and the the narrator will be like now like I don't know his name but they'll be like Jack a gay guy who's playing a lesbian woman is flirting with (laughs) um like Hannah who is in fact a lesbian woman playing a straight girl like and they'll narrate and it's like because no one's who they say they are and like even last season there was like a love story where like this girl liked this guy but the guy turned out to be a woman oh (laughs) who is playing like I how like I sit and like cr- it's like really a cheesy show but it's so funny because they're like flirting and it will be a girl in her room being like okay I need to sell this and she'll be like hey baby how you doing like trying to be a boy uh-uh. yeah. no yeah it's so good it's so funny it's so it's it is very cringe but you have to get past that you have yeah. to get yeah. past the initial first few episodes and then like you're you so bad. die like, like it's, it's that good I think it's funny okay like you have to watch it with humor like knowing it's cheesy but being like this is really funny and so there's like eliminations and the best part is when you get eliminated you get to pick one (laughs) person one person's room who you get to go to like so let's say I to show who you are yes so let's say I made like a flirty connection with a guy and I got kicked off the show I can go to that guy and just meet him in person and if I could walk in and it could be a freaking girl girl. and sometimes it's like like last season there was this guy who played he played like a hipster young guy river like yes (laughs) but he was like a 60 year old gay man like flamboyant and like when they met him they were like what the fuck like yeah like it's and just at the end of the show at the, ver- at the finale they all meet at, they all meet each other so at this and table. they like, don't even know sometimes they're like wait they're like you're, you're this person you're the no way no, no way. Way. Yeah. question everything so I really want to play on this show because I think it's so that's funny. what you're saying so we don't know you're you're not going to reveal if you're going to be you or somebody else I want to be me okay I could say uh, actually I guess I could say I'm really strong I want no, I wouldn't I, I want to be me but I want to prove that like influencers aren't vapid like okay. real life influencers like you can go in with strategy and like you know Ooh. whatever I have more to it but I'm not gonna say yeah don't yeah. Um, don't give away your strategy because so, you're getting on this show do I need mm-hmm. to reapply I will do it you, you have to reapply right I've applied I've actually applied for the show too I'm not gonna I lie. made it to the final round wait that's insane do you have a contact if you reapplied mm-hmm. okay you reapply what are you doing I don't like, even know if I'm we... allowed to go on a reality show if I work here, but whatever. We'll no, you cross are. that bridge when we get there. Yeah, <laughs> try. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's content. <laughs> yeah. Go. Get, I mean, I'll on. be on Netflix, so I'm pretty sure my podcast listens will go up. <laughs> yeah, I think you should for sure do it. I love the show. And then the other things that I had on my spill the tea list to talk about this week, basically is all the competition shows I watch that I don't talk about week to week because I feel like no one else in the world watches them. So I've been watching this season of Big Brother. Okay. And like not very religiously because like, I got into Big Brother for my podcast. I wanted to interview people, so I started watching recent seasons. This season, what's really cool is that there's never in, like, the 20 seasons of Big Brother been a black winner, ever. So what they decided to do, which was really cool, they made a six-person alliance of different, like, black men and women, and those six made it to the end. So now there's guaranteed a black winner, which is, like, Really cool because they're making history. Right. Um, 
and it's been like a really interesting season to watch in terms of just like the fact that they were so cutthroat and they didn't turn their backs on each other once like they kept putting like the cause aside of their own personal you know like sometimes you don't always get along with everyone like some of them would butt heads but they just put the cause above their own feelings and like they freaking made it to the end that's awesome it's really cool that was probably empowering to watch it was really cool yeah um so now like I don't love the people that are the final three because two of them I felt like you know these strategy games, sometimes you have to carry people that aren't great at the game because you know you could beat them. Mm-hmm. So like I feel like two of the people at the end had the worst strategy, but they got carried to the end because you could beat them. So it's like kind of sometimes unfair because it's like, would you rather see good players go up against each other or would you rather people that are kind of just like floaters? Right. So Phil. it's like a little like... But that happens in every competition show. Right. There's there's seasons that varies. And I get the strategy of that. Like, you want to bring someone with you that you could beat. Totally. Yeah. Um, and then the other one that I watch is The Challenge, my favorite competition show on MTV. Nothing really to update there, just to let you guys know I watch it and I love it. And those are, like, really, like, the three strategy shows of the moment that I'm watching. I love that. And I think I just like competition shows because I like the strategy. So you're only interested, you're not, you're interested in their strategy to win? I'm interested in like the social, yeah, like because I'm a publicist and like I used to, my whole job was like to create campaigns and like public image and Mm -hmm. narrating stories. So to me, I'm like, I would love to like put that to practice in a social environment. Yeah. So you want to go on any game show. I don't want to go on like the challenge because you actually have to be athletic and like I'm not that kind of athletic. Like right. these people are running marathons and like jumping insane. out of planes and yeah. So that one I, I can't go on. Um, but the circle, there was a time where I think I wanted to go on Big Brother. Now it's it's really past. Mm-hmm. I think um, I would lose my freaking mind on that show. Mm-hmm. It's like really intense and there's 24 hour live cameras. So like they know what you're doing 24 hours a day. That's a lot. That's a lot it's for the lot. brain. So the circle is my number one. You've got to apply. Come on, we're gonna make it happen. Can you imagine? I need to go. I I'm picturing it already. I'm like, I'm sorry. It just hap- It's happening. Yeah. Put it Send out there. Send me in the world. to Circle Chat. Wait, what did they say? They're They're like, like, take me to Circle <laughs> Chat. <laughs> circle. Send message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've got to go on it. Oh my gosh. I got to email the heart eyes emoji, smiley emoji. Yeah. Yeah. Because you talk, and then the the show types it out for you. That's so great. So they'll be like, ha ha, so funny. (laughs) LMAO. Yeah. You need to watch this. Hashtag. I'm going to watch it. Hashtag bored. Hashtag snooze fest. Like, it's so, it's so cringe. It's really yeah, good. yeah. You the go. hashtags. Oh you have to watch God. season one because like okay. Shuby, Shuby, my <laughs> Shuby. favorite. Shuby, Shuby, and Joey like their friendship yeah, was everything. Watch. Okay, wait, I gotta watch it. I gotta and there was a really hot guy on last season, Mitchell. I mean, I'm obsessed. What's he Mitchell? Himself? Yes, Does he play himself. Yeah, he was, well, so his... he was a 21 year old virgin, I think. For real? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wait. So, but his brother and mom. We're on the season prior. Yes. Whoa. And they and were now, they did it together. Like they were like And now wonder. Ed is on the challenge. Oh, really? Okay, so this is why I like the show The Challenge because is it, they is bring it on show? people from other shows. So like there's people from Love Island on it. There's people from Big Brother on it. There's people from The Circle. Oh. And so it's interesting because it's like my world's coll- it's like all these random reality stars that I've watched on different shows under one roof it's genius for your demographic that watches them because you'll you'll watch the show well that's why i started watching big brother because yeah. i would watch them on the challenge or i'd watch someone from survivor on the challenge and i'd be like oh i wonder what they're like on survivor yeah so then i would watch their season of survivor that's so smart so smart it's like okay i'm, I'm really into all of this and survivor just started this week as well how much time do you spend watching shows well this is the thing i was just gonna say like i don't it depends on the day. Like, there's some days where, like, you know, you'll have a weekend where you'll watch, like, a whole season of something. Mm-hmm. But then, like, day to day, eh, I watch, like, one or two hours of my shows and then I'm done. Okay. so you Because I don't them. watch cable. Like, I'm not one of those people that, like, puts on a movie when I go home or, like, puts on the news. I don't watch 
TV before work. Mine's more just like I watch my shows. I don't watch fluff. To keep up with it. You watch your shows almost like yes. a job. Well, because I love pop culture and I like being in the know. You love pop. You're good. You're good at pop culture. I need to know what's happening. Yes. I can't fall behind. You like cannot. if everyone's talking about the circle, I can't not know what's Absolutely. happening. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you ever watched one out of needing to know like and you're not interested? Yeah, like Big Brother and stuff because I wanted to know so I could interview people. Like okay. sometimes it's kind of research based. Right. You know? Absolutely. Like, okay, for example, Survivor. I had no desire to watch the season, but then Tommy Smoke started a Survivor podcast. And I'm like, oh, I kind of want to know what they're talking about. Like, I do it out of wanting to be included I love in that. knowing what people are talking about. That's a good reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I just need to know. Yeah. All right. Now I need to start the circle so we can talk about yeah. it next week. You need to, you need to start. Okay. We'll recap it next week. So this is everyone's warning. You have a week to watch the circle season three. And then by this time next week, I'll be done and we'll oh, have recapped it. Are you kidding it. me? That's like too much. No, we can do it. We'll do it. Well, because okay. I'm already like four episodes in. So. Oh, so we're four behind. Okay, so we, we got this. Yeah, we we're got gonna, it. We got it. Everyone's got it. You we're going to have a circle recap next week. Yeah, we'll have a circle recap. Um, okay, guys. Thank you, Alex, for joining me. Thanks for having me. This for was fun. Maybe the most random episode I've ever done. <laughs> <I've>, yeah. <laughs> for, yeah. Show. Hopefully you guys laughed. Hopefully you've learned some information on how to sell your feet pics. <laughs> Quick reminder, my Facebook group, if you guys are requesting access, make sure you fill out all the questions because sometimes I can't tell if you're like a bot or something. So I mm. really need you to fill out all the questions in order to be invited in. Um, okay. Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you next week.